Carbon capture storage is a very uh, controversial topic in Canada and the United States these days because it's being increasingly seen as a significant part of decarbonization and emission reduction strategies. I'm going to talk to Angus Rogers from Wood Mackenzie about whether or not it's a silver bullet. He joins us from Singapore. Angus, welcome to the interview. Thank you very much. Welcome. Well, I guess uh, the, the question is very uh, sweet and to the point. Uh, is CCS a silver bullet, particularly for the oil and gas industry? Uh, well, not yet, in a nutshell. Um, it's amazingly how fast it's kind of emerged out of the woodwork. A few years ago, no one was really talking about CCS. And even though it was a technology that had been used in the oil industry for many decades, it was a fringe technology. It was something that people didn't really spend a lot of time thinking about. And now, suddenly, it seems to be the saviour of the oil and gas industry, maybe even the planet. So it's, it has come from out of nowhere very, very fast. Uh, it's not the silver bullet yet. There's so many challenges, uh, and perhaps we can discuss some of those today. Uh, I really like to do that because uh, Canada has a number of uh, CCS projects, including uh, Shell has the big one, Quest. It's a it's a billion dollar project, and they've just. I interviewed one of their vice presidents about their newly announced project called Polaris, which he says is competitive, uh, is is actually economic without subsidies. And I think that's one of the uh, knocks against CCS at this point, is it not? Is that it just is uh, is not uh, cost effective at this point? Yeah. So there's, I guess, when we think about CCS, there's three main problem challenges that have to be overcome. One is the subsurface. Then you have the regulatory issues. Then you have the commercial issues. And I kind of think of them getting more and more difficult as you go down that scale. The commercial one is the most difficult challenge of all. And most of the CCS projects that are operational around the world, like Quest, are the ones which are um, beginning to become go towards fruition in the UK and Norway, they're all very, very heavily subsidized by taxpayers. Uh, I think Quest was over above 70%. There's a new project that FI did in Norway that was more towards 80% phase one government funded. So these are not commercial projects. CCS is a cost. And it's a cost that oil and gas companies don't want to bear by themselves if they can help it. So if there's a, a generous subsidy or taxation package, then that naturally helps them to get that across the line. And I think Canada is a great example that you are, I guess, quite generous in terms of trying to get that industry going. And that's why you are seeing big companies like Shell uh, trying to get more projects going. It, it is very controversial. And um, the uh, oil sands uh, companies just released a, announced the Pathways Initiative in June. And they say that decarbonizing the oil sands is going to cost $75 billion dollars of which probably uh, 50 billion will have to be provided by the taxpayers. You can only imagine how controversial that, uh, that ask is going to be. Uh, now, what about uh, regulatory issues? Uh, what, what are we looking at there? Yeah, so, I mean, when you really look at North America, the CCS industry is relatively well advanced. You have a regulatory structure, you have projects, you have pilot projects. Um, so it's actually quite different. If you look around the rest of the world, you know, companies are in different places around the world saying, right, we want to do CCS in this country. It could be Indonesia. It could be all places around the world. And these countries have no regulatory structure for carbon capture whatsoever. They have no carbon credits. They have no taxation. There's just nothing. So the company's desires to do these projects is way, way faster than a uh, country's ability to legislate for it. So, you know, in the UK, it's taken like 10 years for them to try and work out how they might want to do CCS. So, it's because this, this, this kind of idea of CCS has emerged so quickly, it's emerging much faster than countries can actually legislate for it. It's slightly different in Canada. You have a bit more history. You have this Quest project, so people are getting more comfortable with it. But you do touch on a very important point, is that is the public on board with CCS? And that is a question both Canada, North America, globally. I don't think anyone really knows the answer to it. No one really talks about it, but I think it's really, really important. Does, is everyone agreed and do politicians, et cetera, agree that CCS is the path that we want to take? Obviously, people in the oil and gas industry are very keen on it, but we're not really sure what the public think yet. Yeah, we're having that debate here and, and, and uh, Energy Media is taking, is taking part in it, actually. And the, the question is, if you decarbonize uh, oil and gas production, you still 80% of the emissions are created when you burn that 
burn that uh, oil in, in uh, diesel, uh, uh, gasoline, uh, jet fuel, whatever it is. And the way the energy transition is speeding up, it's, not, it's entirely possible, for instance, in the case of the oil sands, you could decarbonize the oil sands and then it could fail simply because of demand destruction. You know, we hit peak oil demand and then the consumption goes down and suddenly you've got a, a, a decarbonized product for which there's no market. Uh, and I think that's got to be likely to be part of the calculation uh, that politicians, uh, you know, are thinking about as they go forward. Yeah, well, there's, there's two additional points, I guess, that we have to reference. One, if we think about scope one and scope two emissions from upstream, Canada is one of the top five emitters in, in the world. So there is a problem there that does need to be addressed. Um, and Canada being an OECD nation, um, you know, they, that's kind of front of mind and companies are, and you have a carbon tax and companies are under pressure to decarbonize quite rapidly. So there is going to be that push that's kind of taking them to, to invest in this. Um, but on the other side, they, CCS is a cost today, but ideally virtually every oil and gas company out there wants to make a business out of this. They want to make it commercial. So you can sequest some of your own carbon emissions, but if you can make it work and then you can start doing it for the companies down the road, uh, for other people, maybe for some refineries, et cetera, et cetera, suddenly you have a revenue stream coming in and that makes that kind of project much, much more attractive. Yes, yeah, so there's already a discussion of, of that because the, uh, of course, uh, there are all kinds of other industries that are uh, adjacent to or close enough to that the CCS infrastructure could ser potentially serve them. The oil and gas companies often have old fields that could, uh, where they could store the, C the, uh, the, the carbon dioxide. And I guess, are we seeing that same debate emerge in other countries that are looking at CCS? Well, the, it's, it's kind of, as I said, it's, it emerged so quickly that companies' desire to do it is kind of outpacing anybody's ability to regulate or understand. So in most countries, the, the public doesn't is totally unaware of what CCS is, and it probably will stay that way for quite some time. And companies also want to get, you know, we talked about the incentives. So this is where you have a bit of a difference between your wealthier OECD nations who, you know, I'm thinking like UK, Norway, uh, Canada, who have that ability to subsidize some of these projects. But if you're looking at more developing economies, other places around the world, Malaysia, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, many of these places, they're not going to subsidize a project 80%. You know, they don't have that kind of financial kind of muscle power to do that. So you're going to have very different business models emerging around the world. And, you know, they're looking very hard at what Canada and the U.S. has done with your tax codes and the tax credits. And they're trying to work out, is that the way to do it? Is it just a tax credit? And then companies can go off and do it by themselves. Um, but then you've got all these other things around liabilities and risk, you know, liability of if it doesn't work, if it starts to leak, whose responsibility is that? Um, in Australia, there's a project where the government has taken long-term responsibility for the, uh, the, st the storage, almost a bit like the nuclear industry, where governments longer term kind of took the responsibility of storing and keeping the, uh, the uranium. So this, this different governments are facing some really big questions over who takes liability, who's going to fund this, um, and this a really long road to go down. I'm sure we will get there, but as I said, you know, many companies just like we, you know, we have really big ambitions and we want to get started on it. Um, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of work to be done. So that's why someone like Canada is pretty attractive, I think, uh, because you're you're a little bit further down that road. Well, let's talk about further down the road because there's some debate about is this an, a 2020s technology? Uh, is this uh, likely to be Come more common in 2030s, 2040s. What's your sense of the timeline? Yeah, I think that what we'll see this decade is going to be the decade where we countries get their legislation in order, um, pilot projects start to emerge, and you know it, it it won't be able to ramp up. It'll be a post 2030 ramp up for most of these projects. So it's going to this this decade is going to be fact finding and development and trying to work out whether this whether this can work because it's an up dream kind of technology and approach and the ambitions you know you've you've heard them whether it can be decarbonized power stations um refineries petrochemicals all range of different industries it sounds great in principle but yeah we've got a long way to go before we actually know if it's feasible or not particularly from a commercial perspective 
Uh, Angus, thank you very much. Always appreciate your insights. Uh, thank you for the interview. No problem. Most welcome. Thank you.